Reckon you'd be able to guess a golden demon winner's paint job at first glance? Can you spot the telltale signs of a legendary miniature painter? Today we're all going to be putting our detective skills to the test, guessing which one of these minis was painted by an actual, factual golden demon winner. But there's a twist. Unlike a normal painting competition where the entrants spend dozens, hundreds, sometimes thousands of hours on their entries, we are only going to have three hours each to do the best we can. This video has been kindly sponsored by Mini Wargaming, who provided these absolutely terrifying Gorkog Flesh Seekers from the upcoming Ravaged Star box game, The Siege of Ankar. I'll tell you more about that later, but the point is, we're talking about four absolutely identical miniatures packed with detail, the perfect canvas for today's challenge. Now let's introduce the painters. First up, me. Hi, I'm Guy, you're watching Midwinter Minis, and I've been painting Warhammer models on and off for about 30 years now, and I've been doing it for the entertainment of people on the internet for about five years. While I've realistically painted thousands and thousands of minis in that time, I've only ever entered Golden Demon, the world's most prestigious Warhammer painting competition, once last year. But I did manage to sneak a finalist pin. Pretty chuffed with that, but will I be able to fool anyone that I've got the winner's touch in this challenge? This is Hattie, editor and co-presenter here at Midwinter Minis. She might technically be the least experienced painter here, having only been involved in the hobby for about five years, but she used to work at Games Workshop, alongside their elite pro painters on the Evy Metal team, filming and editing the company's tutorial videos. She did try to enter Golden Demon last year, but sadly got disqualified. Now, while she really doesn't consider herself a pro painter, she's got an amazing eye for colour, and it is a total perfectionist. But did she absorb the Evy Metal skills in her time behind the lens? Say hello to Ant, technically the only true hobbyist in the group since he doesn't paint or play professionally. Like me, Ant's been in the hobby on and off for decades, but we became best of buds about seven years ago when we both rekindled our love for Warhammer and met in our local gaming club. Even though Ant has never entered Golden Demon, he's a Tyranid player and has experienced painting hundreds and hundreds of creepy alien bug models, just like today's model. Will his horde painting experience give him a secret edge? Finally, this is Steve, the professional. With about 30 years on and off in the hobby, he spent a good part of the last decade sculpting minis, designing terrain, casting, producing and selling models, painting over a thousand minis and, obviously, smashing painting competitions. On top of his seven Golden Demon finalist pins and two commended entries, he won silver at the 2022 Golden Demon in the 40k vehicle category, coming second only to the legendary David Soper. He's obviously got the skills, but does he have the speed for this challenge? Each painter performed the challenge in total secrecy, apart from Hattie, who had to film it all, so she won't be involved in the guessing game as she knows the answers. And now, for your eyes only, let's take a look at the finished minis. Reckon you can tell who the Golden Demon winner is? Which one was painted by the novice? Which was painted by the Tyranid Army painter? Which one was painted by the pro painting YouTuber? Are we all trying to trick you? and trick each other. Let us know in the comments who you think painted what. We're gonna start guessing soon, and if you stick around after that, you can see how each of us painted our minis within the time limit too. Right, get your answers in. Here we go, in three, two, one, guessing time. Right, gents, should we do the honors? Who's opening this one? Go on it, because I won't be able to reach yes. any of the other ones. <laughs> three, two, one. What? Ooh. Ooh, it's beautiful. Oh, I like that. It's nice. Very vibrant. Mmm. The base is really good on that as well, mm -hmm. knowing how difficult the base was to paint. It's blue, so I'm heavily guessing Steve on this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's really nice. I'm erring on Steve rather than Guy at the moment. Probably need to see. No one's guessed Hattie, though. So it could be. My guess is with Hattie. The it's only not... person who knows whose it is is Hattie. It's not spooky enough for Hattie. I don't know if I've ever yes. seen her paint anything that hasn't got orange in it. Right, I'll reveal number two. Mm -hmm. Who's going? Oh. Ooh. Oh, well, there's an easy way to tell. Guy, what colour is. Uh... Shut, your... <laughs> Shut your face! <laughs> They've both gone for the different colour yeah. needles. You know, yeah, the the that line. felt like a thing to do, though, didn't it? it did, like, I guess because they're quite separate, aren't they? The two that we've had are like 
spot on for colour theory as well though. Okay. Whoever did this one went to the effort of like doing the, the underbelly a different colour, which is a really nice touch, because that yeah. actually would have taken some time. Mm. Yeah, I like the model, but it's a bit of a pig to paint on its base. Cause... I was um, considering, because I was the last of you all to paint and I didn't see what you painted, but I did hear you complaining about painting the face. <laughs> so I was, I was seriously looking at it going like, can I just snip the legs off and paint the face and glue it back together again? Mm -hmm. I'm not sure whose that is. I'm gonna hazard a guess at Ant. Steve, I'm, Ant. Mm, Patty, Guy. I'm actually changing my mind and going, Guy, Steve. No, Guy Hattie. Okay, that way round. Because of the spookiness. Go, go, go. I'm up to you. Oh, Whoa, that's very that's vibrant. nice. Okay, no, I retract. That's Hattie's. <laughs> <laughs> it's orange. <laughs> I like it. I like that the base of the scales there are a different colour on top. So you've got like the darker orange and then the, the kind of more yellow orange and then you've got the saturated kind of highlight on there. Definitely not yours, Steve, because it hasn't got a very heavy matte coat. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm going to go with Hattie on this one initially, just because... Oh, and the belly's a different colour The, be as well. the that's blue cool. belly's nice. Yeah, that's nice. You're going too heavy thinking it's Hattie. I'm strongly thinking this is yours, Ant. Your poker face is poor. Ants. Okay. I want to see the last one before I make a decision. These are the colours that Ant would usually paint. These are the colours that Guy would usually paint, and these are the colours that Hattie would usually paint. I would never paint brown or red and green as a colour combo. That's not mine. <laughs> Just saying. It could be a bit of a bluff. I can't could be see a... what colour it is. Yeah. It could be a bluff. That's part of the game, isn't it? Mm -hmm. it is. Should we go with the last one? Yeah. Okay, okay right. <gasps> oh. oh, this makes it more difficult now. There's it's tufts. A, it's a lot less vibrant, isn't it, than... Uh, but maybe whoever's done this is trying to throw someone off the trail, like Hattie, <laughs> painting it slightly darker than we would expect her to paint. And metallic. No. Is it? Oh, on the Ooh. tail. Oh, oh, yeah. The spines and the tail are metal. Right, I'm changing my mind. This one's ants because that is a terrible poker face you've got there. Right? <laughs> so, so far, Ooh, so far, says, I think I wonder three of them are mine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually very surprised that everyone's is entirely different. I thought we'd at least get one. That there was, was an obvious. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There's, there's pops of colour in there, and I really like. I'm here for the pops of colour. I think this one is probably the most muted one, right? Definitely. I still like it. The green is. Great. Right. Should we go one by one? Um, I think this one was painted by Steve. It's got his signature look to it. Okay. Who's, who do you think was painted by Ant? I mean, these are his colours, but... They're, they're not exactly his colours. Nah, no, but they're in the palette, aren't they? But he, w if he was going to do that colour scheme, he would use the paints that he would normally use. He wouldn't would go rogue and start using, because these aren't the blues he uses, that's not no. the pink he uses. But Just that's saying. the only one that you have said I haven't painted yet. <laughs> that's mine. I'm gonna, I'm gonna stick to what, well, kind of, kind of stick. I'm gonna say that's Ants. I'm gonna say <laughs> that one is Ants. I think that one's Hattie's. Yeah, and I think Hattie's one is this one. Well, I think <laughs> that Hattie's one is this one. Hmm. This one is guys. Hmm. This one is guys. Before we do that, though, mm. do we want to pick who's who's we like the most? Okay, sure. Blind pick our favourite. Yes. Do you want to punch in the gut, anyone? Yeah. <laughs> Blind picking the favourite. I like this one the best. Oh. This is my favourite one. I'm going to choose this one because I like the colours. Very, like, in your face. I'm going to choose this one also. Ah, we've got a winner. Hattie, even though you know, do you have a favourite? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to say it though. <laughs> okay, so before we reveal who did what, I want you to drop a little comment down below and let us know who you think painted the blue one, who you think painted the brown one, who you think painted the yellow one, and who you think painted the green one. I'd be very interested to hear your thoughts. And basically, we definitely want to know who you think the Golden Demon winning painter is, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> Party reveal. Who painted this one? That one was Steve. Oh! No! Yeah. Yeah. Never would have. Completely different. Ha! That's <laughs> I didn't geez. use any colours that I'd usually use. Yeah, and I kept it really you found subdued. found the demon winner. <laughs> it's very different. <laughs> Who painted this one? That was me. Yeah! yeah. I, knew it. I knew it. I knew it. I got one right. Did anyone guess Steve for that one? No. 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 Nope. Hattie, who was that painted by? That was Anne. What? Whoa. Literally got none of them right. 
<laughs> not one. That is a nice surprise. I really like the green, actually. It's mm. really it's like, where's the pink and the blue, man? I know. <laughs> okay, do you tell me uh, who painted this one <laughs> about two hours ago? Who painted this one, guys? It was me. Yeah. Can I retract my favourite? <laughs> <laughs> okay, then. How did you do? Did you guess right? Shocked? Stunned? Appalled? Me too. Now, let's take a closer look at how each of the painters achieved their awesome paint jobs. But first, cool mini, huh? Mini Wargaming and Lazy Squire Games did a fantastic job with these minis. They're from the upcoming Siege of Ankar box set, the first standalone game release from Ravage Star. We've covered their awesome Veil Touch minis in the past and we love them. Now, Ravage Star minis are extremely durable, plastic, heroic scale figurines that come pre built and ready to game straight out of the box. They've also been sculpted with speed painting in mind, with loads of fun textures to make the most out of slap chop, contrast paint and dry brushing. Aside from being part of what looks like it's going to be a really fast, fun tabletop game, the models obviously are interesting a lot of Warhammer 40k players because they look like they will be great proxies, with the new Spacebug Gorkog being a pretty cool swap out for the Tyranids, and the Imari Space Dwarves being a great replacement for the Leagues of Votan. Squats. They're squats, aren't they? Anyway, these box sets are going to start shipping in October and are awesome value for money if you're wanting to kickstart a new army. So if you want to get in early, follow the links in the description and check out the massive bundle deals they have on pre-orders. Now, let's see how the painting went down. I started with no idea what I wanted to do with this, but actually it's giving me deserty, lizardy vibes. So I'm going to look up some fun looking lizards. Aha! This spiny desert lizard will be perfect. Look at his cute little blue tummy. So let's start with a grey primer followed by a sandy beige colour all over. Then I'm going for this bold teal colour on his tummy. It's a bit of a struggle to get that brush between his legs here, but I'll just tidy up with that beige afterwards. Then I'm using this brighter teal to start on some highlights on his tummy. Then I'll carefully place some shading between those segments on his tummy and on his rib cage with thin Achillean green, which is actually blue. It's always annoyed me that one. Next, I'm going to mix some ice yellow with that brighter teal for a more extreme highlight. Now for all the yellowy and orangey tones. This lizard has a lot of yellow on him, so I'm going to do all of my flowy spikes in yellow. Starting with a bit of orange at the bases, I'm going to work towards a bright yellow at the tips. Uh, I mean, I didn't really mean for this to turn into a Pokemon, but it kind of has, and I'm kind of okay with it. I'll do his teeth and claws in black, tinge the bases towards a warmer sandy colour to differentiate it from his body, chuck some various colours of shading all over his body in the base, and then dry brush everything apart from his tummy in ice yellow. I want to make his tail a bit more jazzy, so I'm going to try adding this colour shift paint and see what happens. Well, it's not awful, so I'll highlight it up like that just to bring the edges out again. Some splodges of a warm reddy brown on the base to make it look a bit more interesting. And then I noticed that some of the highlights didn't look quite the right shade after the dry brush. So I'm going to edge highlight with pure white. Then for a couple of final touches, I'm going to plop some Volupus pink in his mouth. And then I don't know if you can really see here, but I gave him some teeny tiny eyes in black earlier. And I'm going to carefully dot some Ard coat on them to bring them out a little bit. Haha, <laughs> he's so cute. And that's it. I'm pretty chuffed with how he's turned out. A little less lizard and a little bit more Pokemon than I was hoping for, but hey, he's still really cute. Now to hide what I've done so they can guess which one is mine later. This whole time, Guy has been working in the other room, and if he's had to come through, I've hidden all of my work. And I'm really going to commit to the bit here and spray my palette so no one can see which colours I've even used. Then finally, to hide my sweet little lizard, I'm going to put him under this metal ramekin Guy gave me and hide him out of the way of everyone else. Right, on to the next painter. Okay, for this scheme, what I'm hoping to do is to actually paint something that looks a bit natural prime it with black, then I'm going to use this dark brown from Vallejo, just firing it through the airbrush, just to get a nice even coat. I really want to cover everything. Right, I really want to make this pop, so I'm going to use this white ink and just do extremities. So the blade on the end of the tail, the jaws and the claws. I'm going to use this green ink from Scale 75 Ink Intensity, and this is just going to be so bright, it's going to hurt your eyes. That's exactly what I want to contrast against the dark brown of the fur. Right, I've had a bit of overspray there, but that's okay. Because it's a dark brown, I can actually cover that quite easily. I like the tail here underneath. I think it's a bit wormy. So I'm going in for this deeper brown. I'm going for warm 
brown here so that when I put the flesh tone over the top, I really want it to look like a worm. Now I'm just going to shade that pink underbelly. Again, going with the warm tones here. I'm just going to quickly highlight. Just put on some of those little bits there. And then just some more highlights with a brighter shade of Kislev Flesh. Next step is for me to actually take that brown and then start adding some highlights by mixing in some lighter colour. The tone I'm using is this warm tone and I tried to pick another warmer tone for the text ceramic in order to actually highlight this a little bit. Now I'm going through some extreme highlights here. I don't really want it to blend too much. I'm just put some corn red on the base because it looks a bit fluid, a little bit gutsy. And now I'm just going to create a glaze out of this green and then put it on in the tips of the claws, just wherever this green is. I'm going to take the white and I'm just going to paint the teeth as good as I can. Then I'm just going to add a sepia tone to the teeth just to give it a bit of shade. I don't want it to be too bright. Now I love this orange, it's so vibrant. So I'm just going to highlight little bits here and there on the base because then I'm going to put this contrast over the top and that's going to give it some nice shade. But the orange bits are going to be my highlights. And there we go. Just go in with a matte varnish just to make sure it's all sealed and that's what we've got. And I'm pretty happy with that. Hi everyone, Steve here. With a little dried tea, some stone chips and super glue, I'm adding some random texture to the base. Now it's time for the boring bit, a nice black undercoat through the airbrush. As although at this point I hadn't decided on the colors, I knew I was gonna be going for something that's darker. Applying the undercoat gave me some time to think some more about colors. And I decided I wanted to go for purple in the shadows rather than sticking with straight black. So I pick up some purples from AK and I give the mini a blast directly from underneath. Now time for the main color. Initially, I decide on a natural slate green. As in a three color scheme, green and purple are normally pretty effective. But once this was on and dry, I decided to up the saturation with a little grass green through the airbrush, directly from the top downwards and in the center of the mini, with a little extra focus on the head and face. With this base of colors down, I wanted to add some highlights and a little bit of texture, but fast. So out comes the sponge and this cute little grabber. With the sponge and some desaturated green, I'm very quickly applying that texture all over the highest areas, focusing on top down. Same again with some vibrant yellow, just to provide a little bit more texture and depth. Now back to the lazy yellow previously used to quickly bring together and soften some of that texture. In an attempt to preserve the work that we've already done before moving on to some washes and shading, I give the mini a blast with a gloss coat. This will also help the washes leach into the deepest recesses without staining the faces too much. First, a brown green wash goes on pretty liberally all over the green areas just to pick out those details. And the warm brown should in theory complete the purple, green and orange scheme. Now for the same approach with the saturated purple to all of the underside areas. Once this is all dry, I decide to apply a quick filter with bell tan green through the airbrush. This brings things together again, but could probably have been skipped if I'm honest. Having deliberately not prepared a scheme, I decide to try something a little bit different with the claws and teeth and spines. My thinking was that the non-biological metallics would contrast really well against the more natural green scheme, and shouldn't upset the three colour scheme already applied. Plus, it's a little unexpected, which can be fun. So I quickly move through some silvers, from relatively dark to a very bright tone, using the brightest silver pretty sparingly on the very highest points and edges. Now it's time to bring a little more of that third colour into the scheme. I use a rust wash around the transitions between metallics and green, along with a few areas around the face and deeper armour plates. Once this is dry, I decide to go back into these areas with some more bright and saturated oranges, working up to a pretty poppy orange for the smallest details. Right, we're getting there now. So it's time to bring some of those details to the fore with a little highlighting. So it's back to the grass green for the first go around. But as we're trying to keep things relatively speedy, I focus on the key areas of interest like the head and face and mostly ignore the rest. Same approach again goes for the laser green, just reducing the area covered and focusing on the higher, sharper areas. Same again with some desaturated green, just to really emphasize the sharpest details and draw more attention to the face. Now here I attempt to paint something to represent some eyes, with the hope that I'll add some OSL later. But once they were in place, I thought better of it and painted them out again. Sticking with the three color theme, I use a little purple and red and add some color to the mouth and gums in the hope that this will reinforce focus to the face a little further. I use these same colors blobbed all over the base before giving it a wash of liquid talent. 
which with the extra dried tea and stone from earlier should look a little like a forest floor. We're really close to finishing now, but I want to reinforce those purple shadows. So I grab some Magos Purple Contrast and apply it through the airbrush directly from underneath as a filter. I really enjoy a flat finish to my minis generally. With display pieces, this is so that I can control the light placement rather than have the room's lighting dictate it for me. But in this case, it's just because I really like the look of matte varnish. Now, no woodland base would be complete without a little vegetation. This hopefully reinforces the natural feel of the piece without detracting from the mini itself. I choose white flowers, as this is pretty neutral and doesn't add another colour to the scheme, which could otherwise be a little distracting. So there it is. I'm pretty happy with it. That'll do for a relatively quick paint job without any kind of plan. Right then, Guy here. Now it's my turn. Now first off, I'm going to do a quick clean up on the model to make it as fancy as possible. These are pre-release 3D models that Ravage Star sent us, not the final plastic stuff that will get shipped out to customers, so there's still a few teeny tiny supports to remove. Now once that was sorted, I mounted it on a little cup, gave it a matte black priming coat, and then onto my first colour, Vexing Purple. Basically, my plan here is to not only maximise my efficiency, but also to sow a bit of confusion for everyone guessing which one is mine. So I'm going to avoid using any of my typical colour choices. Next up, some nautical blue added to the airbrush cup to mix with the previous colour, and then applied mostly to the body area with the airbrush. Same again, but with Serpent Teal, and focusing more on the upper front area of the body and head. Now that's some super quick colour work laid down, now let's apply some Celestium Blue contrast paint, heavily thinned with airbrush thinner and flow improver, and applied all over the model to unify the colours. Once that was dry, I gave the body area a dry brush with the Sea Serpent Teal from before, and now it's time to build up the different colour on the tail, using Demonette Hide as the base coat, and a bit inside the mouth and on the claws too, why not? Switching to Rat Tail Pink, I base coated the big tail spike and all the little spines going up the length of the tail, and then I mixed in a bit of white to lighten it up, and did some rough, sketchy edge highlights with the brighter pink. Now to pump up the saturation on the pink, I airbrushed some green stuff world fluorescent violet over it, not worrying too much about overspraying the tail as it'll just help the colour transition. I then mixed a bit of white into that original Demonette Hide base coat I used for the tail and did a few quick dot and edge highlights on the tail details. And then, same thing on the body, but I used the original Sea Serpent Teal just to catch some of the sharper ridges on the chitin, and then I overbrushed some of the lightened up Demonet Hide onto the squirmy, wormy base just to cover up the areas that had been sprayed with the blues from the airbrush, and then used P3 Arcane Blue to highlight some of the most pointy body spikes. Some Agaros Dunes contrast paint on the base, and then I mixed a little bit of white into that contrast paint to make a highlight colour, just adding a few stripy touches onto the base tentacles to give them a more alien look. A final blast of matte varnish to give it that competition paint job finishing touch, and that's it. Simple, pretty striking, and it shouldn't take a million years to batch paint a whole army. If you've enjoyed this video, and it's not too much effort for you, maybe think about giving your fingers a tiny workout and hitting the like button, maybe drop us a comment, and subscribe if you haven't already. If you're feeling super generous and you'd like to actively support Midwinter Minis, shape future videos with polls, get access to our Discord server, and see silly behind the scenes stuff, please consider supporting us on Patreon. Huge thanks to the most recent signups who did just that. Anthony Carube, El Bueno Paolo, Sebastian Rom Christensen, Gareth, Holden Stackhouse, Eben Kling, Sean Thornton, Gordon Sutherland, Piotr Noga, Steve Kearns, Daniel Cool, Angela QDP, Brad Yance, Brain Leech, Ender De Nerd, and Christopher Plante. And, by the way, Steve, our legendary Golden Demon winning pal, has just quietly launched his own YouTube channel. It's pretty rare that you're able to get insight from such a talented painter, so please follow the little link that just popped up and subscribe. I'm sure each and every click will put a big smile on his face. And that is it. I hope you enjoyed seeing how we painted all of those models and enjoyed the guessing game. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we hope you have a nice life and we'll catch you next time. Bye for now. Bye. Bye everyone. <laughs>